Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we will be discussing the problem longest consecutive sequence from the SDE sheet. So the problem states that you will be given an unsorted array of integers and you need to find the length of the longest consecutive elements sequence. Now what does that mean? It states that let's say you are given an input like 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, 2. So over here, if I take the element 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, it can be unsorted, but you can pick elements from anywhere. So after picking elements from anywhere, if you find a consecutive sequence, you take its length. So we see that its length is 4. So this is the longest possible consecutive sequence that we can make from all the given elements to us. So we need to print the length of it. So let's take this example. As I always say, if you are in an interview, the first solution that you should always give to the interviewer should be the naive one. So the naive solution is to sort this array. So if you sort this, what we get is, so once you have sorted, you can simply linearly iterate and see that there is one consecutive sequence over here, which has a length four, and there is one more consecutive sequence over here, which is of length three. So out of all the consecutive sequence, you need to take the longest one. So the answer will be four. I think I don't need to tell you about how to find the consecutive sequence length because that is a basic linear iteration that you need to do and you need to keep some if else and counters and that should do it for you. So the time complexity for this will be n log n for sorting the array. So when you sort the array, the array will be distorted. Along with that, you will be requiring a bigo of n for the next iteration. And yes, uh, if you are doing merge short, you'll be requiring a bigo of n extra space as well. So before we move on to the next approach, I wanted to introduce you to something very big. Now, Unacademy has tied up with CodeChef to launch competitive programming on their platform. In this platform, you'll be learning from different educators. Now, these educators are world's best programmers who have been to ICPC World Finals. Also, they have won medals at IOI. And some of them are also working at the top product based companies. So currently an academy is hosting a lot of free life classes on their platform. So you can probably try them out. Along with this, they have come up with a subscription plan. Now in this subscription, you'll be getting interactive sessions. Now this means they'll be having live classes where you can interact with the educators directly in the live class. Along with that, you'll be having structured courses. Now they will be having courses for beginners, intermediates, as well as the advanced people. So there will be live classes throughout the year. You can join any of the course or any of the class that you feel to join. And there will also be recordings of the classes so that you can watch it again if you want to of any given live class. Along with this, uh, they're giving you teaching assistance will be clearing all your doubts that you'll be facing. So the subscription comes up in three variants. So if you want to enroll this and you want to get an additional discount of 10%. You can use the coupon code take you forward. Do check it out. The link will be in the description. So in the next step, the interviewer might not be happy with the solution because you are distorting the array as well as you are using n log n. So he might ask you to optimize your solution. So the optimized solution will be to linearly iterate in the array and insert all the elements into a hash set. So once we have done that, we need to linearly iterate over it again. So when we linearly iterate, the first element we get is 102. So what we check is, does there exist 101, that is one lesser than 102 in this hash set? And we see that 101 does exist. So we will not be doing anything. In the next step, we will move to four. And again, we write four and we see that one lesser than four, that is three, does that exist in the hash set? Yes, it does. So we will not be doing anything again. In the next step, we are going to move to 100. So what we see is the number is 100. So we check if 99 does exist in the hash set or not. So we see that 99 doesn't exist. So whenever it doesn't exist, what we do is we move to the next number. So the next number is obviously 101. So we check does 101 exist in the hash set? Yes, it does. So after this, we again increase the number. So we make it 102. So we see 102, does it exist in our set or not? Yes, it does. So in the next step, we are gonna again increase the number and make it 103. And we see that does 103 exist in the set or not? So we see it doesn't exist. So what we see is these three numbers are present in your set. So we can say that 
the length that we got was 3. So as of now, we can say that our maximum length is 3 because this is the longest consecutive sequence that we have obtained till now. So coming to the logic, why am I checking at the first step if minus 1 of the number that is 99 does exist or not? So if you remember when we were at 102, we did not perform this linear iteration. The reason was because what I am aiming is to start from the minimal number. So if I have a sequence and I start from the minimal number, that would mean that the number lesser than that should not exist because I'm starting from the minimal number of any given consecutive sequence. Next time I move to one. So when I move to one, what I check is at first, does one minus one zero exist in the set or not? So I see it doesn't exist. So whenever it doesn't exist, I will see if the next number 2 exists in the hash set or not. Yes, it does. So what I do is, I will go to 3 and see if 3 exists in the hash set or not. Yes, it does. So what I'll do is, I'll again go to the next number 4 and see if it does exist or not. Yes, it does. So at the next step, I'll go to 5 and see if 5 exists or not. So I see that 5 doesn't exist in the hash set. So I am making a total of 4 iterations. So what I can say is the number of iteration made is 4. So the length of this consecutive sequence is 4, which is greater than this 3, which we got previously. So I can update our longest consecutive sequence as 4. Next time I go to 101. So when I go to 101, I do a check for 100. Now the reason I do this check is, if you remember, the sequence was 100, 101, 102. So just imagine if the sequence is very large. So if you do not check for the previous number if it does exist in the set or not you will again do an iteration for this which i don't want because that will eventually lead it to n square complexity that is the reason i am only starting from the minimal element so for 101 i check if 100 exists or not so i see that 100 exists so i'm not going to do this iteration next time i move to 3 so what i do is i do a check for 3 so what i do is i take 3 and i take a one number lesser than 3 that is 2 and see if 2 does exist in the hash set or not it does so again we're not going to do the iteration for it next time i'll go to 2 so when i go to 2 the number is 2 so 1 lesser than that is 1 so i do check if 1 exists in the hash set or not yes it does so i'm not going to do any further iteration the reason this works in linear complexity is because imagine if the uh, sequence was 1 3 4 5 and so on you cannot actually check every time from 2, 3, 4, 5, then from 3, 4, 5, then from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is actually taking you n square complexity. That is the reason we are checking if a number lesser than that exists. That will actually make us do this, that we start from the minimal number and we only consider this iteration. So this is the intuition behind this algorithm. So once you have completed the iteration, the length that will be stored in your maximum parameter that is 4 will be the length of the longest consecutive sequence. So I will be showing you one more example because I want you to get the complexity in a much more clear way. So what I do is I just insert all the numbers into the set. After that, I will be linearly iterating in the array. So the first number that I have is 5. So I do check if one lesser than that, that is 4, does it exist in the hash set or not? Yes, it does. So I'm not going to take it. Next time it's 4. Again, I'm going to check one lesser than that, that is 3. Yes, it does exist. So I'm not going to do an iteration for that. Similarly, for the next number, that is 3, I check if 2 does exist in the hash set or not. Yes, it does. So no iteration for it. Next time, when we take 2, what I see is one lesser than that, 1, does it exist in the hash set or not? Yes, it does. So no iteration for it. Next time, when I move on to 1, now this is the crucial stage. When I move on to 1, I check for 0 and I see that 0 doesn't exist in the hash set. So when it doesn't, I will start iterating from 1 and then I'm going to increase it to 2, then I'm going to increase it to 3, and I'm going to increase it to 4, then I'm going to increase it to 5 and all of them will be there in the hash set. After that, when I increase it to 6, that is not in the hash set. So what I can say is, I got 5 iterations so I can keep a counter and count it. So if I talk about the time complexity, the time complexity is big of n for the first time when you push every element into the set, then it's one more big of n for the iteration that you do over the array, and then it's one more big of n. Now this is 
for checking out the iterations because it might happen that you're gonna do an we go of n looping and you know that since you might have multiple consecutive sequence then also at max you're gonna do a big of n iterations inside that while loop if you count it as a whole so what i can say is the complexity is big of 3n so if you don't understand this 3n what you can do is you can run the first test case and probably keep a count on the number of iterations and then you'll get an idea about why this is big of 3n and the space complexity is big of n now i'm taking that the set works in big of one basically in java it works in big of one now when it comes to c plus plus the unordered set in general cases in almost all cases works in big of one so that is the reason we can say that this is a big of n algorithm near about so it's time to discuss the c plus plus as well as the java solution so if you check out the java solution at the first step uh, they give you the input as the nums array after that as i do i take an hash set and i insert all the element into that set after that i keep a variable longest streak that is basically it computes the maximum of all the consecutive sequences that you get after that i'm going to linearly iterate in the array that is given to us and at the first step what we do is always check if a number lesser than that exists in the set or not and if it doesn't then only we start this while loop basically the iteration so at the first step what i can say is the current number is num assume it's one and we know that this one is a part of that sequence so i can say that the current streak length is one after that i'm just gonna keep on running a while loop till i'm finding the next 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 and whenever i find a next i keep on increasing the current num that is if it is one i make it two then three then four and similarly i keep on counting the number of iterations so once this while loop has been executed what i can say is the consecutive sequence is over now and i've got the length in our current streak so what i can do is i can just compare it with the longest streak and i can replace it if it exceeds the previous longest streak so once i have done the complete iteration i can simply return the longest streak it's time to discuss the c plus plus solution so initially you are given a vector of nums the first step that we do we put all the elements into the set after that i declare a longest streak as zero this is basically it stores the maximum of all consecutive sequences that you will get once you have done that you linearly iterate in the array and the first step that we do is always checking if a number lesser than that that is minus one does it exist in the hash set or not once you have done that we know we have to do the iteration so how do we do the iteration we initialize current num as num and we keep the current streak that is basically the length of the number of iterations as one and after that we just check in the hash set if the next number exists or not like if it is 100 i just check if 101 exists or not if it does i'm gonna make 100 as 101 and i'm gonna keep the counter i'm gonna increase the counter which counts the number of iteration once 100 101 102 is checked you'll not find 103 if you remember the first example so once you are completed with this while loop you have got your length of your consecutive sequence in the current streak so you can update it into the longest streak if it exceeds the longest streak so once you have completed the complete iteration what you can do is you can return the longest streak whatever you have got while iterating 